It's something that was the first of its kind. When people were watching that movie, they had never seen something like this. They'd never seen characters like this on the big screen before. Nobody had seen any movies like this before, where the stoners were the good guys and the cops were the bad guys. We made minorities real people. It's about two guys trying to find a joint so they can start a band. Chicha Chong met in Vancouver, Canada. 1968. He was running an improv theater group in a topless bar. I convinced him that I was this great improv actor from LA and uh, he says, well, it sounds good to me, so he hired me as a writer. I was very crazy, off the wall, and I had other partners that wouldn't listen to me. But Cheech, when I said we should go down to LA and do comedy, he said, I'm with you, okay. Come on, baby, I'll give you a ride, let's go. Any quirky thing I had, he went along with it. We were very different than our contemporaries. That was the great part about it, is we had stolen home plate. Anybody that was trying to do anything about dope or, or uh, you know, street characters and anything, no, they, ah, you're just doing Cheech and Chong. So nobody tried. We had done stage shows, and then we uh, started making records, and they were big hits. And then uh, we said, well, what's next? And, uh, well, I guess we gotta make a movie. Well, how do you make a movie? We didn't know. Our producer worked a deal with Paramount that if we put up our own money, we could do it, which was what we did. We stopped our, our, our career at that point, we stopped touring, started doing anything else, and wrote a movie. Uh, we were making a movie, but we weren't getting paid. There was no big paycheck. And so the biggest challenge was trying to pay our rent after we'd finished the movie. Well, Up in Smoke started out to be a compilation of our greatest hits. In fact, the working title was called uh, Cheech and Chong's Greatest Hits. Somehow we were going to take every bit that we had and we were going to somehow do that into a movie. We <laughs> gave him a, like a, a phone book as a, of, of, a, of a screenplay. And so he says, okay, we got to whittle this down. What the script did, it got us from point A to B. So there's not a lot of writing. Cheech and Chong were an established comedy duo. And when they put a camera in front of them, there was a lot of improv, and you felt it when watching their movies. You felt that they were two distinct guys who you believe would hang out with each other. We were just making it up as we went along, and, and but we had an idea of what we were doing. We had we have to get from here to there, and then from there to there, and then from there to there, you know, so okay. Lou Adler was showing it to some people at the Paramount lot. They didn't understand what we were doing. They just had no idea. The studios were into making, like, Hello, Dolly and that kind of stuff at that time. We met Warren Beatty on the lot one time, and he said, you guys have no idea what you've done. He was right, because we had no idea what we'd done. Because he says, you were just set up the camera and went funny in front of it. The revolutionary concept. <laughs> hey, what's happening, man? They were guys you wanted to hang out with. You wanted to party with Cheech and Chong. And that's, that's kind of a key component, too, to stoner comedies. Like, your lead guys should be people that you would like to party with. I'd love to smoke a joint with a dude. That would be amazing. I'd like to hang out with Harold and Kumar one night. That'd be rad. Cheech and Chong, for sure, you would invite them to your party. I wonder what he's been smoking. Oh, whatever it is, I wish we had some, man. Making your first movie is like having sex for the first time. It, it may not be the best you'll ever do, but man, it is sure the first. I feel good, man. I wish we could have something to celebrate, man. You got a joint or anything? Their only aim in life is to find something to get high on. And they didn't care what it was. And that way, everybody could look down on us. And everybody did, but everybody enjoyed it. They're just funny. They're funny guys, and, and they're real guys. Like, you believe that those are versions of themselves. What was most significant is these two minority characters, this Chicano lowrider and his half Chinese Canadian friend, were the emblems of hippiedom. These two guys, this is it. You know, we, we made him uh, just a simple ass uh, singer in a band, trying to, you know, pick up girls in his lowrider car. And I think that resonated with everybody. I think a white audience could watch a Cheech and Chong movie and relate to the characters and laugh with them, not at them. We just reflected kind of what we saw. And so when the movie was ready to be released, we, okay, here we go. It was a big hit. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. And here was this little $800,000 doper movie that came about and knocked everybody off the charts. We're gonna be big, man, really big, man. We're gonna like be bigger than Ruben and the Jets, man, I bet you. 
It wasn't until years later that we started getting feedback. I got Cheech and Chong tattooed on my chest, man. Here, you want to see? I think that's the ultimate compliment, is when someone tattoos your face on their body. Cheech and Chong are still icons. They'll forever be linked to the genre. Just by virtue of being first, like, they're the pioneers. I mean, when you think of stoner comedy, you think of Cheech and Chong. When we started writing screenplays, the characters were always sort of like representative of us and our friends. And a lot of our friends are Asian dudes, Indian dudes. The fact that Cheech and Chong existed, I think gave us the confidence to take Harold and Kumar and put them front and center in a movie. The Cheech and Chong legacy and the fans, you know, how does it feel? It feels like you just smoked a nice joint, you know? And you're just getting ready to look in the refrigerator for something to eat.